On my senior prom, I dislocated my right knee dancing to Shania Twain's Man, I Feel Like a Woman. Thank you, thank you. Now, what you didn't hear about that is that that occurred during dinner. You know, I don't want to out anybody in this room, but I witnessed a man who grabbed some Starbursts in the back of the room. And if you're wondering where all the pink ones went, <laughs> maybe you don't have a food court, maybe you have another weird, maybe you like stick your finger in your belly button and sell it. Yeah, I don't know what you do, friends. And I think it's fun when we start that way. Because when we start to think about leadership and the serious work that you all have to do, it's also important to recognize that everybody in these meetings has a story. When I show up, you get unapologetically me. I'm not showing up with other people's stories. I'm not showing up with a lot of other people's quotes. I'm not showing you a ton of YouTube videos. You get me, you get my stories. And that's all told through this improv comedy background that I have, the stand-up comedy background that I have. I'm from New York. Where my New Yorkers at? There you go. We shove them in the corner. Uh, <laughs> that's probably smart. What I love about that is humor is so powerful because it gets people to open up, right? And so what I do is I open up my audiences by getting them to laugh, get them to kind of relax, and then I punch them in the feels. Sometimes it's weird in this an environment like this because you're always sitting next to each other, you're always interacting, you're always bumping into each other, you're always playing foosball. Whatever it is, where are the places where you can be like, hey, I know this is awkward, but I also know that it's important. And it takes courage to push awkward aside and lean into the important. With the companies that I've worked with, I've noticed that they're so profit driven and so ROI and what are we gonna do in Q4, but they're not necessarily concerned about the individuals on their teams. That's why oftentimes in authentic leaders see a lot of turnover on their teams. They forget that the work that they do matters and if all they're doing there is to make money and then go home, uh, then I think they are missing a huge opportunity for connection. And connection leads to trust and trust leads to loyalty. We as humans can't learn from people who are perfect. We can only learn from people who are imperfect. In this moment, when you try to teach somebody through perfection, that does not lead to growth, that does not lead to learning, it only leads to shame. One of the reasons why I do this work is because I remember the teams that I created, the individuals and how they just felt, it just felt like they could be themselves. Every year, people could have tried to go to a different area of the place where I worked, but they wanted to come back. They routinely came back. It wasn't just because I was funny. It wasn't just because I was incredibly sexy. It was because I made them feel safe. It's a safe place to learn, to grow, to try, to fail, and to win. I would definitely recommend James, uh, especially at the last company I worked at, where the culture was not that way. Anytime you kind of got out of your shell, it was used against you in a lot of ways. It's a great mentality to have. It's really good for uh, team building and collaboration, and that's a huge thing in our industry. Heroes are kind of like Magic Shell. Y'all remember Magic Shell? That chocolate sauce, my man's with me. That chocolate sauce you put on ice cream turns, turns into a, like a, a heavenly helmet right away, right? But with Magic Shell, it just takes one soft tap at the spoon to see the cracks and the ice cream underneath. That's how heroes are, a little bit of pressure. Hold them accountable, and all of a sudden, you start to see their cracks. But heroes don't acknowledge where they've slipped, where they've fallen, where they've messed up, because they're trying to be seen as perfect. But we can never relate to them. When I speak to companies, I don't give this canned speech that I've given to 800 other companies. When you get me, you, know, you not only get my own stories, but you also get all the stuff that I pulled from the conversations that I had with the team members that I got to talk to on the front end. So I incorporate uh, my stories and their stories to come up with truly tangible results for that company. The initial calls with him revealed his energy, authenticity, and effortless communication style. He took time to understand the objectives of the session and also focused on details like the composition of my leaders. Courageous feedback means that in the space of you giving feedback, not only are you having the courage to open your mouth, but you're having the courage to love that person, right? And you're having the courage to actually share with them and be present because when we provide feedback, it can't just always be, here's what you did wrong, you did this, you messed up, we're here now because of you, 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 you. Maybe you even started off with, you know, here's a time where I slipped. Here's a time where I messed up. Here's a time where I let somebody down. Here's a time where I felt like I failed my team. Share that story. Let them know that you are human. Absolutely bring James on board. He's super relatable. Um, his messages will ring true really in any industry because it's about humans in every industry. And to make sure that you have that the end where we just sat down and talked with him and people were to ask questions was really invaluable. So let me ask you this question. In your organizations, 
Are you who you're supposed to be or are you yourself?